and uh, welcome, dear friends and colleagues. It's a great pleasure for me and an honor, of course, um, as a newcomer to Israel, to talk to you on this occasion. What I want to do is to share with you some ideas about the global crisis of the left and how to overcome it. The crisis of the left runs deeper than the ups and downs of the electoral cycle. The crisis goes all the way down to the roots of the old left project, aiming at striking a balance between democracy and social justice on one hand, and the particular interests of global capital on the other. In the post-war golden age, the left quite successfully tamed capitalism. Today, many do not trust the left anymore to even try it. In order to again become a dominant political force, a new left project needs to change the power structures of the economy. In order to advance progressive policies against the interests of those who control resources, ideology and coercion, any new left project needs to be able to mobilize power. Historically, this power came from the ability of the labor movement to mobilize the masses. Electoral victories mandated left parties to utilize the state and make use of its machinery to produce social justice. Strikes and mass protests empowered trade unions to bargain collectively with the capital side. Yet, both pillars of the labor movement, parties and unions, are today less and less able to mobilize these power resources anymore. The causes for this decline lies in the changing framework conditions which have undermined the political strategies and the mobilization power of the left. Driven by an ideology which demonizes the state and glorifies the market, in all Western democracies the welfare state has been demolished. Four decades of neoliberal policies have changed the primary distribution dramatically, divided societies, and weakened states. When the systemic instability of financial capitalism could no longer be ignored, it was too late for a U-turn. Not only have multilateral companies and mega banks distorted markets, the global financial flows are no longer controllable by democratic nation states. However, the left has also inflicted self-harm to its political cloud by abandoning its project and following the neoliberal stream. And as a result, the marriage between capitalism and democracy is coming to its end. Neoliberals and parts of the left believe that the markets must have primacy over the state to create wealth. Accordingly, the state is relegated to a service function for the market. This means the reduction of politics to a repair shop for the economy. For a new left project, this development has dramatic consequences. First, the key instrument of the left power, the nation state, has been eroded. Nation states can no longer tackle global challenges, ranging from climate change to terrorism and financial markets running amok. However, Global governance is not without problems either. The shifting of competencies to the intergovernmental level also undermines the remaining cap capabilities of democratic nation states. Second, the shift in the balance of power between capitalism and democracy deepens social asymmetries. The ones who control the means of production and coercion are political actors in their own right. The weak first have to organize to become political actors. Thus, in order to implement progressive policies, a left government and party needs to be able to mobilize the masses even and more so between elections. But the deterioration of traditional left milieus makes this mobilization even harder. For a while, the dependency on a declining clientele could be compensated by the third way promise to be the socially just variant of capitalism. 
This may have been for technical reasons, but led to abandoning the struggle over primary distribution and led to more social exclusion. As a result, left parties became undistinguishable from conservative parties, and centrist voters now treat the left as one interchangeable option amongst others, changing sides whenever the mood swings. The new balance of power, which has emerged, makes the traditional formula as much market as possible, as much state as necessary, no longer viable. A broad societal debate over how to best respond to these shifts has already begun. On the one side, the unleashing of capitalism proves that this predator can never be tamed. However, what kind of society could replace capitalism is mostly left unanswered. Some conclude from the very predominance of the economy the need to come to an arrangement to prevent even worse things from happening. Why appeasement would work, given the current asymmetries of power, is mostly left as an open question. Today the key question is twofold. What kind of society does the left want to build? And, given the balance of power, how could this vision be implemented? The starting point must be how to rebuild political cloud for a new left project. Given the financial, coercive and ideological power of the status quo coalition, the existential question must be what are the power resources for such a project? even if, and that is a real big if, it should be possible to again win elections. An electoral mandate will no longer provide, provide enough legitimacy to enforce the implementation of progressive policies. Reform-minded politicians need to understand that only the ability to mobilize can create the political capital which makes them political actors in their own right. More so, discourse hegemony is needed to prevail against the status quo forces. Discourse hegemony, however, can only be won by embedding policies into hopeful narratives of a better society. The concept of a better or a good society may sound like a utopian idea. But utopia poses a normative compass which can provide guidance for policy makers and orientation for citizens. Only a vision of a good society enables citizens to make an informed judgment on whether a policy path leads to the right or the wrong direction. The utopian compass legitimizes progressive projects where winning elections is no longer enough. But utopia is more than a compass. Utopia is a key energy source for progressive projects. Without the ability to mobilize, progressive policy makers cannot prevail against the forces of status quo. With passionate faith in a common vision, people do not come together or without passionate faith in a common vision, people do not come together in great numbers. Only a positive vision for, the, for a better world and a better future can mend the paralyzing fear of the end of the world as we know it. Only if enough people believe that a better life is possible, they are willing to struggle for change. Only on a common platform, actors with differing interests can join forces. That is why it is not essential if utopia is realized or not. Utopia allows imaging imagining a different world beyond the reality seemingly set in stone. By agreeing on a common vision for the future, people can come together despite their immediate interests. The promise of realistic change gives people a sense of agency. When people join their forces in a community, a powerful sense of awakening will create momentum for change. Utopia can link together isolated struggles across national, 
or in, uh, social borders in solidarity. The faith in a better tomorrow energizes people to fight for it here and now. The hope for a better tomorrow gives people the courage to take on institutions which existed for hundreds of years and to rebuild them from the ground. Vision, hope, faith, courage, solidarity and unity are the key sources of power for progressive left projects. The present crisis of the left is rooted in the surrender of any vision beyond the market society. After the collapse of communist regimes, the end of his history narrative discouraged even progressives to believe that a left utopia is possible. But without any utopia, the left is giving up some of its primary sources of power and is destined to negotiate pragmatic policies. Such a struggle about pragmatic policies can never be won by the left. Only passionate debates over policies can build new trust in progressive actors. And only trust in the sincerity of left actors gives credibility to utopia. Without that, it will not be possible to combine isolated struggles together in a broad societal coalition. And only a broad societal coalition can mobilize the power resources needed to shift the development path towards a different society which enables broad-based people's participation, social justice, and here in Israel, finally, also peace based on a two-state solution and secure borders. Thank you very much.